is painting vanity and pride. Carry not, my Lord, was crucified. No, not it was for me. Continue in our service as we're going to sing from our hymn book, S, S, and S, uh, number 145. S, S, and S, 145. Um, this is to welcome you, those who are here and those who are online watching us. That as we begin our evening service now, God is with us and He's going to bless us all. Amen. In the course of the week, I read about the power of song. A king in the Bible that had the spirit of evil. When the music and instrument is played, that evil spirit is left him alone. So that is to say, as we are going to be singing heartily now, any evil spirit of lies, of trouble, of sorrow, of sadness, of frustration, the world leave us. Amen. So we are going to sing heartily. Amen. We thank God for the opening from our organist, Brother Teams, with all those uh, solo uh, rendition. And our uh, little daughter, Rachel, we enjoy that flute solo and the choir joy in the camp. May there be joy in our camp today. Amen. And two friends, lady, who sang a duet to us. We are now going to start our own. Amen. We want to sing with all our heart, Amen. and every presence of the devil will be driven away. Amen. SSNS 145.
Amen. Let's take another popular number, 894, Amazing Grace. This is an S, 894, Amazing Grace. 894, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. We will take verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2 of this one sitting down. 894, verses 1 and 2. To me, that is Jesus talking. All power is given unto Him, and He can do anything, and He's going to bless us today because all power in heaven and on earth is upon the hands and shoulders of Jesus, and He will, he will set everyone free. One zero nine zero, far, far away. The orchestra will introduce this one for us briefly. One zero nine zero. And then we'll take verse one and the last. One, zero, nine, zero. Far away. Before prayer is going to be a chorus. Our song before prayer is going to be a chorus. Um, it's a common chorus. Um, uh, can we can the projector please take it up for us? Avi, 
Uh -huh. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Uh, the organist will give us an introduction, and then we will all the orchestra join to sing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We will rise up to sing this one, and at the end, we will remain standing, after which we shall be led in prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Because even tonight, we are looking up to thee with great expectation, Lord, that you will answer our soul. You will save our soul. You will sanctify us. You will fill us with the Holy Ghost. You will heal us, Lord. You will deliver us, Lord. We will set us free, Lord. We will enjoy the liberty that is found in thee, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, we thank thee, Lord. Come down and be with us. Come down and bless us. Bless our testimony service. Bless the service tonight. Bless our preacher tonight. Wonderful blessing, Lord. Grant us, Lord, at our altars, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't listen to the following announcements. Uh, we just believe that God is in our midst. Yes. Singing tonight has been wonderful. It's been great. We've enjoyed it. And we just know that something is in the air. Yes. And God is about to bless us. Yes. Uh, during the week, there will be Bible study in all our Bible study centers, 7.30. Um, we're continuing our holiness series. Number was quite low here in Bexley last Wednesday. Let's do our best to come. It's a great time, and I believe God has something to say about um, holiness in our financial matters. So try and make it a date. God bless you. Um, the end of one prayer will take place on Friday, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Let's all be there. Um, I think it's here. So here at Bexley. Next Sunday, should Jesus tarry, we'll have our Sunday school for all ages at 9.30 a.m., Devotional service at 11 and the combined youth service, first one for the year, 5 p.m. here in Bexley. Just to also remember that this year's women's, women's conference, as was mentioned this morning, woman to woman, would hold here in Be at Bexley at, at, on the 3rd of March, Saturday the 3rd of March. All our ladies who are 18 years and above are expected to attend. So can we please register with uh, Sister... Sheke, Abimbola, and Sister Esther Jelenke. Okay, and I believe God bless, bless, has a blessing in store for you. Now, there's, there will be a box at the back hall for women. I think I saw the box there. So, it's in the lobby area. There's a box at the, uh, in the lobby area 
where you can write and drop maybe your prayer request or any issues you want um, to be discussed on that day. So I think that's fine. Um, the annual youth camp this year, uh, I think yesterday I was looking at youth camp 2007. And I just saw the drastic change that has happened among a lot of us here. And um, it's just an amazing event. Um, so this year, the title is Relate. It's hashtag Relate from the 4th to the 7th of May. The registration is open. It closes on the um, 11th of March. Please register with Brother Tolu Olaududu. Um, and... Uh, now it's time for testimony service. So, but we're going to have our first special. Um, one of the choir members who will be in that first special can open the testimony service. And after that first special, we have two minutes, 120 seconds. After which, um, if you go above that, we've got the capable Brad Tim. Take care of that. God bless you. Amen.
because whenever you stand up to testify to the power of God, yeah. the, the, the host of devil shakes. Yes. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. Amen. I thank God for his power to save, Amen. to sanctify, and Amen. to baptize the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I thank God uh, this evening because God did something for me. Uh, sometime last year, I was driving one of my vehicles, and I was stopped by the police, and they started questioning me about insurance and all that, all of that stuff. And uh, after I've gone through their, all their questioning, eventually they came up with um, one uh, reason why they have to stop me and uh, find me. And they said because I, I lost one of my bumper, my back bumper was missing. And they said because of that, that the vehicle, I mean, the vehicle is not worthy on the road, that uh, they will write me, then I have to come to call this and that. And after about three months, I was praying. And after three months, I got a letter, and they said after we appear in court, and I started praying. I told my wife we were praying together, and God just uh, ministered to me to speak to one of our brothers, and I spoke to Brother Giles in uh, Peckham. I told him about everything, and he said, okay, just write them, don't panic. Write them why you think uh, the, the vehicle is still worthy on the road. I wrote them that letter, and uh, we were praying. And all of a sudden, sometime last week, that just gone by, I received a letter from them that uh, I shouldn't bother to appear in court anymore. Amen. That I've been set free. Amen. I thank God for this. Amen. 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 It's loving care. Amen. Uh, in 1986, when we still just saw revival before the advent of UK camp meeting, we had people from Nigeria, brother John, I know, Jerry's father, and his brother Adeli. They prayed with me at the altar. And God saved my soul. Amen. It was wonderful. After that, we went to Nigeria for some time. But when we were back to Bethel, it's uh, always good to me to say when people say, I can take you to the place. And I know in Peckham, this is the spot I got saved. <laughs> and I thank God for that. It revived my soul that God has kept me Amen. through thick and thin, and I'm still on my feet serving the Lord. Amen. Thank God for that. Uh, the reason why I'm standing up this evening is just that this uh, last week, I wasn't feeling that I'm going to officiate last week. But when I saw uh, visitors trooping in, and the challenge was that we were not many in the orchards, I had to just strive and do the work. It was getting worse during the week. On Wednesday, I couldn't come for Bible study, but I said, but what should I have vowed when we were still in the scripture union? You know, when it's raining, we're going to serve God. When it's fire, we're going to serve God. Uh, this is not a dying thing, it's just flu. I'm going to church. So I went. With faith, I came with uh, water bottles on my side, and I asked them to pray for me. Just like, just let's fulfill the righteousness. But lo and behold, on Thursday evening, I woke up sound. Amen. There is power in the blood. Amen. So I was surprised. How could this miraculous? Is this, is this a joke? That within a few hours, God healed me completely. Amen. So I that puts in my mind that. The God of this that still ill is still working there, and I will want to serve him to the end of my life. saving my soul. Amen. I thank God for sanctifying me. Amen. I thank God for um, baptizing me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I thank God for his blessings upon my family. Yeah. I thank God for journey mercies. Yeah. Um, I want to thank God especially for two things. Um, during the past week, my daughter went for a surgery. We thank God that God took her there Amen. and brought her back safely. Um, after, the, I mean, after the surgery, she was like, oh, mommy, this is very awful. But now, I mean, she is playing and she's, I mean, she, we don't even know that anything is, has gone with that. I mean, it has been done on how I thank God for that. Um, in the past, I think two weeks, I was, I have a few projects to do at work. And the two weeks, the anxiety was so much on me. It was like, how am I going to get this done? Um, when we came for the women's prayer, I just lie down there and I said, God, 
I don't want this anxiety. Mm. I haven't done this project, yeah. but I don't want it. You have promised that you will help me. Yeah. I just want your help. Take this anxiety away. Yeah. Before I left here that Saturday, God took that anxiety yeah. away. Yeah. Um, one of them was to present um, at the board, um, board meeting. God just took control. Amen. How I did it, how I can't explain. Amen. I just thank God for his grace. It is Amen. God that can, I mean, yes. when we have things before us, I mean, there is no, he said, there, there is no meat for, for, for Christians to, to, to fear or anything. We just bring it to God and God took control. I still have so many projects ahead of me. In fact, I look at them and I say, how am I going to do this? But I know God can do it. Amen. So I'm just thanking God and I'm just coveting your prayers that you Please remember me in your prayer. Amen. I want to give God all the glory for the salvation of my soul. Amen. I really, really thank God that out of my family, I'm the first person he brought out from there. And I used to be the one that used to go to mosque more than all of them and went to Quranic school. I give God all the glory for how he has been with me. Amen. I want to thank God for what he has done in the, for the past two years and more. I cannot explain what I went through, but I know that God is with me and I'm here today. Um, uh, the upper week, I was going to, well, I went to work. And um, it's one of the places that I have to take the high speed um, train. And I bought the ticket and, um, and, and when I was coming back, I used the ticket through the toll gates to come in. And then um, I got on the train. And then they asked me for my ticket, and I was just, you know, I thought it was just a child's play, just to pick the thing from my pocket, and I couldn't find it. And anybody who goes on high speed train, you know, they don't joke with their money. They will charge you like 150. And, and I was just, I, I can't just believe it. I was putting all my bag, everything in my bag, drop it off. I was just looking here, and I was surprised, where is this ticket? The man, the conductor said, I will go and come back. He came back again, he said, where is it? I was still there, and then I started reciting now. Our father worked in heaven, all the way, and then he got that way. So I began to, I, unashamedly, I was just reciting it. I said, ah, where can this ticket be? You know, the ticket is almost like 40 pounds. So, and then uh, he came the second time, he came the third time. The third time, when he came, he said, I'm coming back. By, by the time he was coming for the fourth one, I didn't know when he was, whether he was coming or not. I got to my bus stop, and I got off as S fleet. And the next thing was that, how do I come out of the, the um, toll gate there? Because I know they are very, very strong about it. But to God be the glory. As I was walking down, I called somebody while I was on the train. I said, I'm just anxious. Can you just pray with me? The person prayed with me. So by the time I was going, there was nobody at the gate. Amen. I, through. I want to thank God. Have you any room for Jesus? He will bore your load of sin. As he knocks and asks admission, say, now would you let him in? Room for Jesus, King of glory. Hasty now is what obey. Swing the heart door widely open. Bid him enter while you may. Room for pleasure, room for business. But for Christ the crucified. Not a place that he can enter In the heart for which he died Have you any time for Jesus? As in grace he calls again Oh, 
today is time accepted. Tomorrow you may call in vain. Rome for Jesus, King of glory. Yes, he now is what obey. Swing the hands door widely open. Bid him enter while you may. Rome and time now give to Jesus. Some will pass God's day of grace. Some thy heart be cold and silent. And our Savior's pleading sins. Rome for Jesus, King of glory. Is he now his word obey? Hey, swing the hands the white leg open. Bear them while you may. Swing the hands the white leg open. Swing the white leg doors open. Swing the hands the widely open. Bid him enter while you Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 20, verse 5. 2 Kings, chapter 20, and we'll be reading um, verse 5. 2 Kings 25. Turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father. I have heard thy prayer. Amen. I have seen thy tears. Amen. Behold, I will heal thee. Amen. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This evening, the Lord is speaking to us on the theme, I will heal thee. Amen. You know, when you are a member of a family, there are certain rights that are yours automatically just by reason of your birth. Yeah. We know there are families where you only just need to be born to um, such families. And for the rest of your life, you don't have to toil. Maybe even in some cases, while um, the child is still, the pregnancy is still dead, the parents have already set certain things aside for the child that this will be the child's inheritance. When such children are born, if they go to school or after school they do some work, it's not because of what they will eat, not because um, of what they will live on, because that has already been taken care of. You know, by reason of you being a member of the family of God, you are entitled to certain things. Yeah. They are just there for you to tap into. Yeah. They are just your right. They are not things that you really need to beg God for. God himself knows that you need those things, and he has made the provision for you. And all you just need to do is just tap into it. But you know, having said that, even in those families, there are children that may live as paupers in those homes. Some may be out of ignorance. And for some, their parents may just decide that, you know what, you have just decided not to listen to us. You've decided to just go your own way. And because you haven't honored us as your parents, we're not going to will anything to you. 
and such a child may live as a pauper, even though he is born into such a home. And then you have strangers outside who might then come and benefit more from the wealth of that family than such a child. We don't want to be in such a situation because our Father in heaven has made enough provision for us and we just want to tap into it and take it. Praise God for the testimonies that we heard this evening. You see, God still heals. God is still in the business of healing his people. It doesn't matter what the sickness may be. God has said in his word, said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. And you see, when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, when the atonement was made, it wasn't just for our sins only. Jesus made that atonement for both our sins and our bodies. It was an all-encompassing atonement that Jesus made. And that atonement will avail for everyone here today. Even those that may be watching us on the internet or those that are not watching now, but that might watch later. You see, this same God of heaven will reach out to them with his healing hand. Amen. And God will heal. Amen. Whatever your ailment may be, whatever your sickness may be, you know, some sicknesses, uh, you, you just cannot explain them. Um, some people have mental illness. It might not be very obvious. Some people have ailments that it's only known to them and their spouse. They just can't mention it outside. Some people, um, they cover their problems, their ailments, their sickness. They just wear clothes to cover them. And if they let you into what they are going through, you will sympathize with them. But you see, Jesus Christ that can see far beyond the clothes that we wear. Jesus Christ that can see deep down into our hearts. Jesus Christ that can see deep down into our minds, our brains, that can diagnose what the problem is. He is here tonight. Amen. And he is going to heal Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's see um, the atonement in Isaiah chapter 53. It's a place that we all are familiar with. But you know, sometimes um, one reads the Bible and you don't really apply your mind to it sometimes. Um, particularly if it's a story that you are used to, you just read it in passing. I, I, I personally cannot remember the number of times that I have read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's, it's a task that I give myself from time to time. I don't finish it in a year. It may take me longer than even two years sometimes. But what I do is every time I have a program that I just design for myself and for myself only, that I follow through. And once I hit Revelation chapter 22 and the last verse there, the next time I go back to Genesis chapter 1 and I start reading again. But do you know that in spite of that, sometimes when I hear people preach from this same Bible, when I re find some places and I read for some reason, it just amazes me. And then I start asking myself, but I've read this book over and over again. Why did I not see this place? Because the word of God is always new. Yeah. So tonight, apply your mind to it as we read. And by the grace of God, these words of God will work for you. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, from verse 4 to verse 5. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. You know, so you don't have to bear your grief anymore. You don't have to carry your, carry your sorrows anymore because Jesus Christ has borne it. He has carried it. The Bible says, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. So what else do we need? We don't have to pay for it. It is not uh, because, oh, I have been 30 years in serving the Lord. I've been 40 years in serving the Lord. No, we were born into it. No, that is not what gives you a better right than somebody that was born into it yesterday. The, th the fact is that there is nobody that paid for this on our behalf. 
other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And because it was Jesus Christ that accomplished this for us, he has made it available to every one of us, irrespective of our race, irrespective of our color, irrespective of our gender, irrespective of um, what tribe we come from. The provision is there and it's just there for us to tap into. And as we tap into it, God cannot fail. You know, um, let's see Malachi chapter 4. We have seen the atonement that Jesus made now, which is all encompassing. You will notice there that sin, our iniquities um, um, are mentioned, and also be, besides our iniquities, it also talks about our healing, even our physical healing. Let's look at Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Malachi 4, 1 and 2. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. All right? Um, sorry, I, I, no, I think I got that. No, oh, I, I was reading Micah. Please pardon me. <laughs> Malachi chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2. Say, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But this is where we're going. Verse 2. But unto you that fear my name. Are you here tonight? Do you fear the name of the Lord? It says, but unto you that fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the store. That promise is for you. If you are here tonight and you fear the name of the Lord. You see, um, we, we, we are not serving God just for the purpose of going to heaven. Of course, heaven is the ultimate. That is where we are heading to. But you see, serving God has its benefit even here on earth. Even here on earth. We begin to reap those benefits. So it's not just when we get to heaven that we are going to enjoy it. Here on earth, we will enjoy it. Because the thought of God towards us are thoughts of peace. To give us an expected end. God does not want his children to live in sorrow, in pains and aches. God is not interested in that. There is no parent that is worth the name parent that will be delighted in seeing the child suffer and say, oh, do you feel that pain? He say, yeah, yeah, I want you to feel it more. Yeah, yeah, feel it more. No, no, no parent will rejoice that a child is in pains. So God is not rejoicing that we are in pains and in aches. I remember my father when, by the grace of God, um, he, um, he, he met the Lord Jesus Christ. He was ill. Amen. And they brought him from, from our village to, to us in Lagos. And they just drove him straight to the house of one of my sisters. And when that my sister saw him, he, she just knew that this is beyond medication. So what she did was to bundle him in a taxi. And they went straight to church. You know what God did? God healed my dad. Amen. And healed him perfectly. Amen. Before then, he was always persecuting us. All of us that had got born again. Because he was thinking, um, he, he had a plan. Because I, I'm the first son. There are only just two of us that are boys in his hand. So he already had a plan that, yes, I will um, be carrying the staff of the, of the um, what do they call it, uh, of the priest in the church. You know that type that they will carry in normal yeah. conventional places? Yeah. And that's right. That I, I, I would do that. And then suddenly I got saved. And I left that church and, and so he, he, was, he wasn't happy at all. I, all the time he would say things that were not complimentary. But this sickness struck him. And they had to bring him to us. And the, the place he was taken to was the church. And the Lord healed him there. And then when he, came, when he was to go back to the village, um, the only thing that he took from us, from Lagos, was a Bible. He said, now, I know that there is God in heaven. He said, I am no longer sacrificing to any dead father. He said, if my dead father is delighted at my suffering on earth, then he doesn't deserve any sacrifice. 
that I will go about now and tell people that it is a waste of time sacrificing to those dead people because they cannot help, that it is only God that can help. The point I'm making is that there is no father that takes delight in their, in their children's suffering. So God delights in you being healed, in living in sound health. Don't take that illness as your cross that you must live with. Don't think that, well, it has come to stay. If you might have prayed for 30 years and it hasn't gone, keep on praying. The Bible says, ye have not resisted unto blood. So keep on resisting. And say, this sickness, my body is not an abode for you. You cannot stay here. The Bible says that um, um, the, um, the, the strangers shall panic. They will be afraid. Wherever they are hiding in your bodies, you only need just to command. And say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this sickness, depart. And the Lord will take it away. It is not your own strength. It is not your ability. It's not, be, it's not because you are somebody, but just because you are a child of God. And God will fight your cause. He will take away that ailment for you. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. That is a promise for all of us. Um, the Lord says there that, and said, If thou we diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and we do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The first time, I guess it was, that I heard um, re-preaching about divine healing. The preacher that night said, some people settle for divine healing. He said, but you can settle for divine health. Amen. You know, you can settle for divine health and say, this body of mine is not an abode for sickness. So sickness will not even come in at all. God can do it for you. There is nothing impossible for God. So don't see sickness as an affliction um, that God will necessarily bring upon you. Of course, for whatever reasons, God may allow certain things to happen to us. But as I said to you earlier on, God does not delight in afflicting us. The Bible says that God does not do evil. He does not tempt with evil. So you can pray to God and say, I don't want this sickness anymore. And God will take it away for you. Let's see the fulfillment of the promise. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Say, and Jesus went about, just note what Jesus Christ went about doing here. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And finally, what was he doing? And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. If you are a child of God, you are among the people that Jesus Christ has come to heal tonight. There is nobody here that can heal anyone. So don't let anyone deceive you. And we thank God by the grace of God here, we don't preach or teach that um, there is someone here or that there is a set of people here that can heal. We, none of us heals. If you are sick, can you come to the seat of the elders? We will obey the scriptures in the book of James. We will anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord and we will pray for you. And the Bible says that the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. That is where we stand. A child of God is not immune against sickness, against um, all kinds of things that happen to people in the world. But when they come, you can resist them. Yeah. You know, somebody will say that you cannot stop a bird from flying over you. But you can always prevent a bird from perching on your head. You can stop them from, 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 from flying over. Sicknesses can come from left and right or wherever. But you can tell the sickness, you are not yet at your final destination. Check next door. Let it keep moving. And the blood of Jesus will avail for you. 
there is no immunization that is as strong as the blood of Jesus Christ. When I'm on the bus or up where it is usually the train, if you sneeze by my side, I plead the blood of Jesus. I may not say it out, but I will say it within me. I plead the blood of Jesus. If at work you are sitting across me or beside me or you are, you are sneezing or you are coughing, I'm ple- as I'm looking at my computer and doing my work, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. And any time I notice that there is something, there is uh, an indication that I'm coming down with the flu or something like that, I begin to plead the blood more than ever before that I will not catch this cold. I will not catch this flu. And you know, it has always worked for me. If it has worked for me, it can work for you. And it will work for you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, you will notice from all the places that we have read that this promise is for the children only. It is only for those that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is actually more interested in the healing of our souls than the healing of our bodies. But just as he's interested in healing our souls, he's equally interested in healing our bodies. Have you not read in the Bible where um, somebody will come and check very well? Jesus will not first subject them to interview. Are you saved? When when did you get saved? When did you repent? Uh, No, he wouldn't do that. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, that I may receive my sight. Okay, you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Get up there and, and, and go. And then Jesus will now say that go and sin no more. In other words, the healing of Jesus Christ is twofold. He will heal your soul and then heal your body. But he will not because you are a sinner and you have come to him. Um, therefore, you are not entitled to his healing. However, he will let you know. If you want this healing and you want it to be permanent in your life, you also need to get saved. Because sin is the source of sickness. That is what the enemy uses to enter into somebody's body. Tonight, if you confess your sins to Christ, if you are not yet a member of the family of God, if you will tell God, Jesus, you know what? I'm tired of sin. I don't want my sin anymore. See, I I can tell you from my own testimony that for years I lived in affliction. I lived in fear. I lived in nightmares. I had problems. I had issues. I was poisoned, and I couldn't breathe properly. But when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ in 1978, the Lord gave me victory over all of these ailments. And since then, by the grace of God, none of those afflictions have come back to me. You know, the Bible says, affliction shall not arise the second time. Tonight can be your night. You can get saved tonight, and you can get healed in your body. I invite you to the altars to pray. God bless you.
Lord God, you are wounded for our transgressions. Come and heal our body. Come and heal our soul. Come and heal our spirit. Heal us, O Lord. Save us this evening. Sanctify us. Give us your Holy Spirit. Give us your anointing. Make us worthy for heaven. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.